I figure with all the talk about banning AR-15s and other things that we're hearing in the media, I'd give you all I guess my ideas on the whole thing. I am Canadian, so I do know a little bit about guns that have been banned. And I really don't believe in banning guns and specific guns because of how they look or how many times I've seen them kill something in a movie. In 1989, a guy in Canada basically was mad that he wasn't able to get into L'Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal and that women were. He ended up walking into that school with a mini 14, walking into a classroom separating the women from the men and he let the, all the men go and he started executing the women and then killed himself by the time it was all over 14 women died and a whole new gun debate was sparked in Canada This gun debate, because people were being controlled by their emotions rather than their brains, sought to put in a whole bunch of laws, a lot like the ones that you guys are about to possibly get if all goes according to their plans. One of the big things was that the standard size magazines were no longer considered safe enough for the general public to use so they reduced all magazine size for center fire rifles with a few exceptions to five rounds and pistols to ten rounds rimfire they didn't really apart from the pistols being ten rounds all rifle magazines were left at whatever size they have to be because we all know a 22 doesn't kill people but anyways another thing they did was they made a nice big list of guns that were either restricted or prohibited completely I could link a list of the firearms in my uh, video description for anyone who wants to go see it but they added quite a few just because of how they looked and they basically gave it a scary rating and anything that was deemed too scary for civilian stone regardless of what it was or how it worked became prohibited Prohibited here basically means that if you've had it before a certain date, you're allowed to keep it. But new licensing won't let you acquire any prohibited firearms. You can't get a license for getting prohibited guns. On that list, they put in any pistol that had a barrel length of less than 4 inches because they were worried about Saturday night specials which to me is still crap because they still exist in Canada except they're only in the hands of gang members and mafia and basically a criminal element of the big cities they also banned firearms by name 
and by function. Now, crime still exists, even though they've banned it, and even though we've had a registry for pistols since 1934, people are still using pistols in crimes. None of them are being registered, obviously. So a lot of these laws that they put in place did nothing to make us safer as a country. They just prevent me legally owning guns that are deemed too scary looking for me to own. And as I said, I'll link to a list. Anyone who knows anything about guns will laugh at a lot of the suggestions on that list because they have a bunch of different classes. They have the full auto class, which is normal. Even in the States, they've basically banned them. Uh, converted semi-automatics, which means that it used to be an automatic rifle, but they've made them into semi-automatics. Those two, you could almost have a justification for. The rest of the list is just ridiculous. But as I said, you could look through it and make your own judgment. But what I'm basically talking about here, and I figure I might as well warn you all about, is that all these guns being banned and made prohibited did nothing to make us safer. All it did was remove my freedom to choose what kind of firearm I was allowed to buy. Even if it functioned like other firearms that I could buy, but some person who had no knowledge on firearms decided was too dangerous for us. That being said, you guys are going to get a bunch of people making a whole bunch of more rules about assault weapons. The problem here is that the danger in the definition. It's a term made up specifically for the first ban that you guys had. An assault weapon is basically anything that they deem to be an assault weapon by looks, by accessories, and pretty much, as I said, anything they decide is a factor. So if you wanted to dress up an old hunting rifle in black plastic, have a folding stock on it or heat shield, shroud I guess you would call them, it could technically be considered an assault weapon because of the standards they put in place. Now I say this because in Canada everyone's emotions because of that shooting incident ran wild basically. They allowed all these lists to be made because everyone had this big fear of the Mini-14 and how scary it was as a weapon. The media played into all this by showing pictures of the Mini-14 all dressed up rather than how it was sent out from the factory originally. It made it look like a much scarier gun than it was and it allowed people to get a fear of the weapon that really shouldn't have existed. Especially anyone who's tried one knows exactly what I'm talking about. Getting back to the whole point is that the liberal government in the 90s ended up making a whole list of guns that beforehand was not a problem, never used in killings and crimes, and did nothing but offend 
the sensibility of a certain I guess we call them MPs and lawmakers and whoever was put in charge of the whole program so we lost our freedom to choose what guns we were allowed to buy well we wanted to buy just because some person who had no idea what guns were about made a list saying that we weren't allowed to buy them now the funny thing here and the thing that I want to warn everyone about is that they use a Mini 14 as a big example and started the whole ball rolling on these bands basically on all the prohibited list and in the end they left the Mini 14 completely alone there was no special laws put into that gun kept as a non-restricted which means you could still take it out hunting and everything with you but they banned a whole bunch of other rifles pistols and in the end they were able to basically rid Canada of a bunch of guns that really hadn't harmed anybody now I say this because in the states you're gonna have the same problem they're gonna make a big stink about the AR-15 and whether or not they ban it isn't the issue the issue is going to be that they're going to ban a whole bunch of other things with it and it's not going to make your life any safer they put in rules in 1980 well, in the 90's for us after that incident and yet we still had school shootings including the Dawson school shooting where a guy walked in with fully legal restricted which means he's not even supposed to be there with them weapons and shot up a school just because he felt like doing it all these laws didn't make us safer and they won't make you any safer either criminals don't like to follow laws that's usually what makes them criminals why would you just add a whole bunch of more useless laws as a knee jerk reaction to obviously a horrible event but not something that's a very common occurrence anyways that's my views on it feel free to comment I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of people who agree with me and disagree with me but all I'm saying is that I wanted to warn everybody about it because emotions are excellent ways to pass laws that normally nobody in their right mind would agree to so sometimes no matter how bad something is that's happened we've got to step back and really think look at the facts look at the real story and use our minds rather than our hearts I know it might sound a bit insensitive and I don't believe people should be able to walk into schools obviously and kill a bunch of kids but I also don't believe that because of people like that everyone in a country should be punished It's like when you're in school, you got one jackass causing trouble, and the whole class had to stay after school. Did you cause trouble? No. Yet you still were punished for it. And I guess the thing that 
links it this whole thing is that I know people are going to say that children shouldn't have the fear to go to school and that, but even when you put these laws in, it won't change anything. They used an AR-15. Why? They had access to it. But did they not have access to that gun? Had it not be sh been shown so often, they would have used something else. The AR-15 might be effective, but there's a whole bunch of other guns that don't look scary out there that work the same way. Unfortunately, if it could kill an animal, it could kill a person too. Anyways, all guns are dangerous in the wrong hands. We all know that. But knowing that and banning guns is not going to make it safer. Why? Because assuming that we do like England and completely ban handguns and everything, there's still over 50 kill murders with guns in England. There should be zero according to the way the laws work. If nobody has a pistol, how are people getting killed by them? Obviously there's a way to get them and all you've done is punish the 99% of people who don't actually cause crimes or perpetrate murders with guns and you've left the other ones able to use guns if they can find one and if they can't find one it doesn't matter because they know that no matter what they'll still have the upper hand anyways hope I was clear on the way I spoke and I'll try not to do any more of these political videos anyways Thanks for watching, and feel free to comment whether you agree with me or not. It's okay. I don't have a problem with the debate as long as it stays civilized. Thanks.